Hello, and welcome to Travel Stories Unpacked, the travel podcast where we talk about all things from the silly to the serious and everywhere in between. I am your host, Ashley Newton, and thank you so much for spending your time with us. We really appreciate it. On this week's episode, we are going to unpack work travel. And you guys, I am so excited to talk about this because I have opinions and I think you all need to hear them. So our guest for this week is my friend and coworker, Chantal Nye. Hi, Chantal. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We've been wanting to get you on the show like since day one, <laughs> but unfortunately you had some injuries you yes. had to heal up. So yes. I'm really excited that you're healthy and here on the podcast today. Thank you. I am honored to be here and so excited. Yay. Okay. So Chantal and I both work for KHM Travel Group and KHM is not only the sponsor of this podcast, but it is truly a fantastic place to work. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. But, you know, obviously this isn't my first job. This isn't Chantal's <laughs> first job. So we've both had the opportunity to actually travel um, outside of our current employment with some other companies. So Chantal, tell me a little bit about your life and what it was like before coming to KHM you know, what jobs you had and what you did. Sure. So I've been in the travel industry for going on 19 years now. Uh, I started early 90s, uh, right out of travel school, worked for uh, AAA. I worked for AAA twice in my career um, as a retail travel agent and um, didn't get to do a ton of travel for them, but there were two big trips that I did get to take with them. Uh, one was I hosted a group of 20 to Alaska. Uh, we did a princess cruise tour and I had never done anything like that before. Uh, my manager put together all the numbers and he's like, I can't go. You're going to lead it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh my gosh. I'm going to do this. <laughs> so throw me in the deep end. So um, how much time did you have to wrap your head around preparing for that? I had like two months. Okay. And it's not a lot of time, especially no. if you're leading the group. Exactly. Not a lot of time and a lot of preparation. Like when right. you're traveling for work, you have to get in a certain mindset and focus. It's not about you. It's not about vacation. Uh, it's about details, details and helping people because yes. they're, you know, they might be your clients, but maybe they haven't traveled a whole lot. So you're kind of learning as you go. And, and I told them that I said, I've never been to Alaska, but I'm here for you. And we made it through. Yeah. I, everybody who came with me came back with me. So I didn't lose anybody. <laughs> a plus. And the luggage. We didn't lose any luggage either. So, yeah. you know, but once we got up to Alaska, our flights were fine. But Princess, we went on Princess. Mm -hmm. And from the time we got there until we left, they had guides that kind of led us through. So it really, I didn't have to do a whole lot other than just be there as a representative for KHM and then just get to bond with Well, before people. KHM, right? Because Oh, this yeah, was, I'm sorry. No, AAA. you're so good at your job. You're just like, I assume that's oh, why I was there. No, with, with AAA. <laughs> so, you know, it's being their representative and and bonding with them. Yeah. And um, so it was, it was great. Uh, I didn't think I would like Alaska because I'm always cold and I'm a warm weather girl, but I fell in love with it. Yeah. And the Aww. people that, that I went with too. Yeah. So, um, but I love how you started that off, you know, cause then you sort of end on all the like high notes, but I love that you set the tone for what I think this whole podcast is going to be about. And it is so much preparation. Yes. It is, you have to look at it completely different than any time you're taking a leisure trip right. or anything. I mean, it's especially when you're on the working side of it Absolutely. which you know you'd think would be all sides but that's not always the case you no. know what I mean like in that case you were the organizer so while you right. had people who were also traveling for their business mm -hmm. and to learn you were like sort of the head person in charge so that's it's just a whole nother thing and I think people tend to get caught up in the oh well you're in Alaska Yes. So that's so fun, but like it's work too. It's work too. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's the details. It's so Carolyn Orff, our friend, mm -hmm. uh, she taught me to, you know, packing is different too when you're on a work trip <gasps> as opposed to a leisure trip. Right. Yes. So she gave me the best suggestion. I print out a calendar and each day I plan what I'm going to wear yes. on each day. You and I know, and I know we'll talk about this, that there are work things that you have to wear work outfits for. Yes. There might be leisure time that you have a little bit of downtime. There might be a dressier event. So 
I'm a bad packer. I pack where I feel like I'm going to move to that destination. A little Everywhere bit of an I go, overpacker. My husband and I yeah. are horrible. Oh we're no, horrible. you're both bad. Oh, we're both bad. <laughs> Jay, Jay is almost worse than I am. Yeah. So when you have to look at all the things that you're going to be doing on that work trip uh-huh. and packing for all those things, it, it gets, uh, it yeah. gets challenging. No, we're going to talk about it right now because <laughs> I was, uh, before the podcast started, I'm talking to Chantel, you know, and, uh, I noticed we were dressed. If you're watching on YouTube, we're both kind of have just like linen-y like yeah. uh white with like a little bit of print on it and I was like oh we're kind of like in a vibe and I told her I specifically wore the shirt I'm wearing today which is just like a three-quarter white linen shirt with these like polka dots mm-hmm. and little flamingos all over them to travel in I bought this shirt for travel because you do have to toe that line you're not on vacation you can't just wear whatever you want <laughs> so you have to like look professional you also have to follow whatever company protocols and dress code that your company has so I have all these really weird businessy shorts that I never wear any other time because it's like you know what I mean they're like a stupid length and like nothing can be too flattering but you don't want to be unflattering either so it's like a really weird line to toe and then when you were talking about packing in general when I have to pack for for my job what I do is video content creation so not only is my main carry-on just like a bunch of video equipment right um so that changes everything but then for your actual clothes you do. You have maybe your certain uniforms that you have to wear for certain days, but then you also have to be knowledgeable. Is this a place where I can show my logo? Is this a place where I can't show my logo? Because sure. for what we do now, traveling for the travel industry, <laughs> um, when you're on these resorts or when you're at these, um, you know, on these cruise ships, a lot of the times they don't want you repping your individual travel brand or, you know, the host agency that we're a part of even, sure. which again, I know we're... <laughs> I'll explain all this eventually, (laughs) but right now I just want to talk about the clothes, right? (laughs) And like, so there are certain things you have to wear or certain days, you know, well, I'm going to sweat through this in five minutes because (laughs) I'm going to be working so hard and in the sun. So like you do sort of have to overpack, but you also don't really have the luxury of just having a carry on when your carry on has to be your camera equipment. And all of this is just something that you have to figure out in like five, 10 minutes because it's the least of your planning worries. You know what I mean? Like, it's actually the least important thing, but it's just another stressful element that I don't think people think about when they just hear, oh, you just got back from Tahiti. Right. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, uh, yeah, but I worked like 28 hours in the day. Exactly. (laughs) It's like, well, that's, you know, for fam trips. Yeah. So, uh, you know, going on a fam trip, generally companies will come to us when they have extra rooms. And normally that's in the summertime. Let's say it's in the Caribbean, Jamaica, or any other place in the Caribbean. I've been to Punta Cana in July when it's been 90 degrees and 100% humidity. So the the glass, the sliding glass door is wet. So you're getting ready in your room. You're feeling pretty good. You're looking pretty good. You know, you're like, okay, hair's having a great hair day. (laughs) A lot of product in here. You step outside. And within five minutes, the hair has fallen. Mm -hmm. There is sweat. Your makeup is literally down to your toes. Yeah. And you are sweating through everything. And that's that's when travel agents, a lot of us, go on fam trips. And we're seeing, I don't know, seven or eight resorts in a day. And you're running around. You know, you're taking pictures. You're posting these beautiful pictures. And people are seeing that. But they're not seeing. Nope really what you're going Mm. through you know by the time you get back and you're exhausted no they have no idea yeah no idea yeah and to show you how little people know I want to tell you what I thought fam trip stood for when I started working for Cajun travel I thought it stood for family I thought that they were going on a family (laughs) trip and like like not really like their (laughs) relatives but like that's just what they'd call it you know like like this is our fam trip we're getting together with our you know our industry family and I just thought it was like a cute little like thing it is so the opposite of that (laughs) it is like a strenuous travel marathon where these agents are going to all these properties and inspecting them. I mean, head yes. and toe. They're looking at yes. wedding services. They're looking at um, different room categories. They're looking at neighboring properties. They're looking at golf courses that are nearby. Right. I mean, like the amount of time 
<laughs> these agents are moving. I mean, you you don't sit. No. You're you're not testing the beds. I've heard that's a big thing. Oh, don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So like, I just think that is sort of the hurdle that especially when you travel for work in our sector, yes. that people just don't understand the amount of work that goes into it. And I think that when I, before I came to KHM in, in another life, I had another yes. job. And I remember the first time I got to travel for that. We're from Ohio. So it was from like Northern Ohio to Southern Ohio, <laughs> but I thought it was so cool. And I was like, I get my own hotel room. I was like, really, it was like a, I, I don't even think it was like a Holiday Inn or like an Embassy Suites. It was like an off brand <laughs> one of those, you know? And I was still so excited and, um, <clears throat> like really excited to tell people that I was getting to do this and getting to leave and getting to travel for work. And then actually as I'm in it, I was like, this is just kind of more work than I would be doing at the office <laughs> and um, getting compensated the same amount. I had to drive here four hours with some guy I don't know who has to pee every two hours. And really, I hope he's doing well. He was a great guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's just like, it's not fun, but at least that I could understand. Right. Nobody's thinking I'm living a glamorous life, driving four hours within my own state to the middle of nowhere. Right. Nobody's jealous of that. Right. The conversation changes a little bit different when you tell them you got off a seven night cruise. Exactly. Right. But, yeah. th but they're not understanding that, for example, when we were on Crystal or have been on Crystal, you're waking up at six o'clock in the morning oh to get ready to be starting your day at seven or seven thirty. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, it's going to dinner with agents or our coworkers. And then, you know, going out maybe a little bit at night. And then you're getting up and you're doing it all over again. Oh yeah, it never stops. So let's take a minute yeah. and explain who the heck KHM Travel Group is. So KHM Travel Group is a host travel agency, and what that means is we support independent travel agents all over the country as they run and operate their independent businesses. And that's about all I'm going to say on the structure of the business. And if you want to know more, um, I actually worked on a video with Bill Coyle, yeah. who is another coworker who's yeah. also been on this podcast, where we go over all sorts of different questions you could have about that. Um, so we'll go ahead and put that in the description. And you can find it on Cajun Travel Group's YouTube channel as well. But just if you want to understand what a host travel agency is a little bit more. But for Chantel and I, Chantel is in the supplier relations mm -hmm. department. I am in the marketing department. So <laughs> I personally don't sell travel. And that's another thing that people don't understand when you say you work in travel. Right. They're like, oh, and I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard job. But do you still actively I sell? Do. Okay. Do. So you have like so, so many jobs. That's a lot. <laughs> it's, yeah. Ever since I've been here, I basically work two jobs Yeah. because I don't, I don't feel that being a travel agent can be a part-time job because you're always working for your clients. You're right. always checking on things watching them as they travel. And I still want to do it because number one, I, I love it. It's just a part of me. It's been a part of me for so many years. Right. And you know, I love my clients, but I also want to be relevant, you know, in my job. Yeah. I'm working with suppliers. I feel like I'm, it does give you an edge. Right. And I was with education before this. So teaching people how to be a, a travel agent, what is a travel agent? How does it make you different from Costco? You know, right. um, but being relevant to the suppliers. So if I'm selling their brand, you know, I can go back to them and, and give them my experience. And I can also relate with our agents if there are, you know, questions or concerns or whatever, you know, it, it just helps keep me relevant. So, yeah. No, I love it. And I personally love having that insight from my coworkers that do both because yeah. then I'm like, I feel like I have a secret weapon to help what <laughs> I do be even more impactful for our travel agents. Right. Um, so now that you have a little bit idea of, you know, what KGM is all about, with that, we do have some incredible opportunities to travel. I remember when I applied for this job, I saw it on Indeed and I saw that you needed a passport to apply. <laughs> and I was like, this would be amazing. I mean, I wanted this job so incredibly bad. I couldn't even begin to describe it to you. And I truly do absolutely love my job. And we have some amazing, incredible travel opportunities. Um, like Chantel mentioned, there's fam trips, which not family, familiarization. <laughs> and that's really about getting the to know like products typically on land. Mm -hmm. And then when they're at sea, they're called seminars at sea and or ship inspections. Right. So that's like the cruise counterpart. So I've done some of that, but internally within KGM, I would say our main event that we get to travel for is our crystal conference. Yes. And the crystal conference is an amazing time. It really <laughs> is. 
because all of our agents at all their various different experience levels, you know, we want everyone to come. Some people bring their families, right. like agents will bring like their spouses, their aunts, their kiddos, and some staff members will do that too. It's really open. People usually refer to it as like a family reunion vibe, right. you know, and it is. we are really excited to see each other. There's a lot of education. Mm -hmm. There's, um, you know, different training sessions. There's different networking sessions. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, the award ceremony is kind of a fun big deal. And for us, <laughs> what that means is, oh, there's training sessions at eight. You're up at six. You're there before they even start. So Chantel, how would you describe the amount of work that goes into Crystal just once you're there? We're not even going to go into... No, okay, I'm going to go into it. <laughs> so <laughs> this is really quick. But Crystal is um, typically like in the first few months of the year. Mm -hmm. And that just so happens to correspond with when I get my teeth cleaned. <laughs> so <laughs> I have literally been in the dentist's chair exhausted from the <laughs> amount of work going into Crystal that I will fall asleep during my cleaning. <laughs> and I told this to Nate, my boyfriend, and he was just like, you're a psychopath. Like nobody can fall asleep during a tooth cleaning. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't understand how exhausted I am. Yeah. This is the first time I've laid down and like closed my eyes <laughs> in like three days. So I, I, yeah, I fell asleep in the dentist chair. Right. That is how exhausting planning for Crystal is. So now that you know that, Chantel, how exhausting would you say it is during the week? And it's worth it. Oh, it is worth it. Totally worth it. Uh, it so let, let's go back if we can. Yeah, it, please. It's about um, a year's planning process uh -huh. for our events team. Um, supplier relations is involved because we're getting the bids from different suppliers that want mm -hmm. to host us, right? So in my part of the world, in, in supplier relations, you know, we're getting the suppliers to come on board. Oh, and so, I'm sorry. We should back up. Uh, Crystal is always held in a place, right? Yes. So uh, yes. it's been on cruise ships in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, this coming year will be in Orlando. So yes. it's on location, no matter how you want to think of it. Right. So please right. continue. So Bridget and I, Bridget Gerber, um, we work together in supplier relations. So our job on Crystal is to take care of all of the suppliers that we have confirmed, which can be close to 30. Yeah. Um, so our job from beginning to end is taking care of those suppliers, making sure they are where they need to be for their presentations. Um, we're giving them information. We have a WhatsApp. We create a WhatsApp. So I input 30 phone numbers in my phone and we have a WhatsApp group. So when we get there, we are constantly communicating all day long, every single day. If anything changes, you know, we're, we're telling them where to go. Yeah. Um, just could you imagine being on vacation and having a WhatsApp group with 30 people bothering you all the time? No, because that wouldn't be a vacation because it's work. Please continue, Chantal. Because it's work. So, but we're also there to help our other teams, mm -hmm. you know, so if someone is shorthanded or they need to set up something, um, you know, whatever they need, basically we're on call Yes. from the time we land, let's say in Florida and we're getting on a ship, from the time we really get on the plane for KHM, exactly. that's when it starts. If we're on a ship, the minute you walk out of your cabin until the time you walk back into your cabin to go to bed, you are on. Yeah, and even then, depending on your roommate, you yes. might still be on. Yes. You know what I mean? Because, yes. you know, you can choose to room with mm -hmm. somebody that you know. You could choose to room with really yeah. That's up to you. But for me, unless I am, like, completely alone or with the one person in this world I actually like, <laughs> Nate, that's you, um, I... <laughs> I can't actually just be myself. I can't unwind fully, right. you know, because I'm more worried about the other person having a good time. And right. especially from an employee standpoint, that is my job is yeah. to go above and beyond and make sure that you feel comfortable and yes. you feel happy and you are having a truly remarkable time. Yes. But it is work. It's a yeah. great job, but it's a job. Right. And we're, we're dealing with agents. You know, we're talking to them. We're which we love. We exactly. love talking to the agents. We love talking to the suppliers. We love introducing them. But there's also times when someone might get hurt or mm -hmm. someone's sick. You know, I remember uh, uh, two crystals ago, one of our agents was really, really sick. She had, I think, like an upper respiratory infection or whatever. And she was, I knew her. Um, so I would go and check on her. And one day I, I, I was headed there to check on her and probably about five agents stopped me to talk to me. And then a couple suppliers caught yeah. me on my way getting on the elevator yeah. and coming off. So it's not that I minded. 
but it's, you're always on exactly. and you're always trying to help and you're always trying to do your best for, for Rick and for KHM and right. you don't want to let anybody down. Of course. You know? So yeah. So by the time the week is over, you don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> You don't want to look at anybody. <laughs> yeah. You just, you know, and I apologize to my husband on my way home. I'm like, and he knows after all these years, I've been here eight years. He knows, he understands. I come home, I give him a kiss and I go right and lay on the bed. He takes yeah. my luggage into the other bedroom so I can unpack later. And he just gives me some time just to decompress. Well, and I know that Jay has come with you on Crystal before because yes. yes. we sat at the same dinner table. Right. So right. What was that like for him? experiencing you, seeing you in your element, seeing you, how hard you work, seeing how dedicated you are to making these events just outstanding. He, he was impressed by everybody. Yeah. He, he could not, it was like clockwork. It was watching people just, they don't, we don't think we just do. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jay's good about, you know, he doesn't need me by him by his side 24 seven. Yeah. You can't bring a plus one to one of these events no. if they need their hand held. No, you he cannot. is good with talking to other people. He's good with going off on his own. Mm -hmm. Um, he loved being at the award show, you know, and dressing up and being a part of that. Yeah. He loves everybody here, the executive team and everybody. So he had a really good time. Um, he really, he likes, the agents too. I mean, and they know him just from singing and stuff like that, but he, he just likes being a part of it, but he saw firsthand the first time he ever came. Wow. Now yep. I get it. Now yes. I understand why you can't even form sentences when you get home. It's just, eh, eh, you know, like, grunting. yeah, that moment was so important for me <laughs> because I, Went on my first Crystal conference and I went, you know, just me. I didn't even worry about a guest or anything like that. And then the second time when they told me I could bring a guest, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, okay, I'll, I'll do it this time because honestly, it was like, I need the emotional support. Right. I need a place where I can go to my cabin or a room at the end of the night and just feel completely 100% not obligated to anyone, yeah. you know, yeah. and like just have that emotional refresh, have somebody to make sure like, no, you did format that memory card. I watched you do it. I watched you double check, triple check, go to bed. You know what <laughs> no, I mean? Right. So when I asked him to come, yeah. Nate, my boyfriend, and he, you know, immediately was like, heck yes, cannot wait to go. Yeah. I remember the look on his face when he was just like, you're still working. I was like, I'm not even close to that. <laughs> like, I'm not even close to that. Right. And, you know, you wake up, you leave the room. They're still asleep. Yeah. You know, they casually have breakfast. Like, for him, it's a vacation experience. Right. He's not even doing, like, the learning or the trainings or anything that the agents are. And then I, I'm just, like, busting butt. I don't know how else to explain it, but I'm, like, dripping sweat. I have to shower <laughs> midday. Like, it is so validating I think for me to then have him say year after year you worked even harder this year Aww. you worked even harder like and he's like I feel like each year you get busier and busier and I just kind of laugh because I'm like yeah. I think we're getting like I actually think we're getting it down <laughs> like, I thought I had more free time but I think that's interesting too because our jobs are so different yeah but when you are traveling for work it's a little bit more people interaction mm -hmm. yeah because of my job I get to hide behind a camera a lot and I don't know what I would do if I couldn't to be right. honest with you but at the same time it's a double-edged sword because then my job never ends right it, oh you you were gonna have a late night drink well that's kind of a cool bar better get a shot of it oh you want to get in the pool get that GoPro and put it on your head and you swim around <laughs> like a crazy person and I will you know what right. I mean right but it, it never really ends so I just want to say this <laughs> if you know someone who travels a lot for work maybe they're a travel agent maybe they're yeah. in the this industry maybe you think oh how lucky it is that they're going to all these amazing exotic places mm -hmm. shut up just <laughs> shut up just keep it to yourself they're exhausted yeah. you know what I mean like they probably know all these airports like the back of their hand but they're not happy to be there they're not happy to pay another $12 for an overpriced sandwich as they're going through their checklist trying to make sure they right. have everything and you know it's I I one of my least favorite sayings in this world is do what you love and you'll never work a, a day, day in your life. life. <laughs> Whoever made that up is so diabolical because I think it gives people these unrealistic yeah. ideas of what your life is supposed to feel like. A job is a job, dude. Right. Like I have the best job in the world, but it's still a job. A job. And, right. it, and if you're doing it well, it yeah. should take work. It right. should take effort. If you want to be proud of the work that you do, it makes sense that it's going to be exhausting. Right. But I honestly, I wouldn't have it any other. I just want y'all to shut up about it and stop acting like I'm going on all these vacations. They're not vacations. <laughs> but I have to say something, and this is a compliment I wanted to give you. I wanted to give you for a very long time. So last year we got to go to Jamaica 
uh, our team and the marketing team. And it was really the first time that I had gotten to witness you and the team working and what you do. And can I just tell you, and I'm not going to cry. I'm not, I'm not going to be bull coil. Um, I just have to tell you that how impressed I was and how proud I was to be a part of this company and to watch you and everybody else work so hard and you put your heart and soul into it. I was blown away. I honestly was so impressed with your work ethic, with what you accomplished in such a short time that we were there with the heat, with the humidity and everything else. I just, I was, I was very, very proud to know you and to work with you at KHM. Oh my gosh, don't tell. So, so uh, <laughs> I'm not crying, you are. No, okay, real talk. It was so hot and so humid <laughs> and so, I mean, it was beautiful to Jamaica, but I legit got diaper rash from sweating so hard. I might make Annie cut this later. I don't know. But like, if you want to just ever imagine, oh, that's so glamorous. Is it? Is it glamorous to have diaper rash at 31 because you're sweating so hard on the job? I don't think so. But uh, no, and it is a privilege to, you know, ha have this these opportunities and really one of the shining things that come out of it to me are those team building moments yes. um, and seeing you know, like just getting to know people that, you know, at the most you do a, Hey, what's up by the water cooler yes. or, you know, something like that. So yes. it is fantastic and it is great. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't have the best job because I do, <laughs> but it would just be nice if people <laughs> understood, you know, when you, when you yes. do love your job and you do work really hard, you are working right really hard. And I guess that's, that's all I got to say about it. But I do right. want to know what is sort of one really cool work experience, work trip thing that you've had, whether it was work focused or just somewhere you got to be? Because for when I'm traveling with KHM, they usually do really try to give us time to enjoy the destination that we're in. I mean, whether it's um, on the port days mm -hmm. when you're cruising, you know, they try to give us those. So I've had some truly remarkable experiences that I wouldn't have had if it wasn't for this job. Yeah. So is there anything that you want to share that you're like, this was just the coolest thing? So... I, th I think I would say um, last year I was asked to host a seminar at sea on the scenic eclipse. It's one of their I was yachts. looking at your Facebook photos of this. This looked incredible. Yes. And Jay got to go with me. And I believe there were about 20 agents mm -hmm. on there. And these yachts um, have a helicopter on it. They have a submarine on it. And it, it was a seminar at sea. So there was some educate, you know, education and things like that. What we got to experience, we got to do the submarine, um, the photos one day when we were out in a kayak and all of these dolphins jumping, my husband got some incredible up close pictures. I wanted Scenic to buy them so we could maybe get a free trip on yeah. them, you know, like go to their marketing. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was spectacular. The one thing for me, it's kind of like my husband's a carpenter. So he, when he walks into a restaurant, he's always looking at the structure of, you know, how things are made, you know, as a travel agent, because I've been one for so long and it's ingrained in me. I look at all the experiences and that was amazing. Plus I got to be with 20 of our agents and that was outstanding. And we just met, we did kind of an impromptu meet and kind of went over best practices for like maybe an hour and a half. And having everyone there listening to their different experiences and talking and bonding, to me, that was that was just the icing on the cake. Yeah. So to experience that level of travel, that that yacht experience with my husband, you know, seeing what we got to see and experience, and then also being with the agents, that that is just the creme de la creme for me. Yeah. So no. I enjoy it. I mean, that's incredible. And, you know, I could sit here and share a million different stories. Sure. But the one thing I do want to say is I got to go to, it was a cruise excursion to Amiga Island. And it's just the coolest place I've ever been. It's just the coolest thing I've ever done. And I think what makes it so satisfying as well is it was 
a break after working so hard. Mm. So you really do feel like you earn it. Like as I was drinking that Haitian beer in the ocean, I was like, I am a goddess and I deserve this. <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? It's just like, right. it's so satisfying yeah. and it creates these memories that I'm truly thankful to have. Sure. But I've learned another thing about myself and that is that I cannot work in places where people are having fun forever. You know, like, right. have you ever wanted to work at an amusement park or if you ever wanted to work in like a bar or somewhere they, where the environment's just fun? Not me, because like I hate like I, it's so hard, but like I really do hate seeing people lounging by the pool, drinking, <laughs> hanging at the beach, doing all my favorite things, and I'm at work. You know right. what I mean? So like I I can't work in happy places, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> well, Chantel, thank you for coming thank on. You. I had so much fun talking with you about this. And hopefully, you know, we spread the word for those <laughs> that do this. And they can under, you know, people can yeah. understand a little bit that while it is an immense privilege, it's work if you're doing it right. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for listening. If you want to know more about KHM Travel Group, I highly encourage that you go to khmtravel.com and you can learn all about everything we do there or explore our YouTube channel a little bit. There's a ton of good content on there. Not just saying that because that's my day job, but it's true. <laughs> Keep coming back on Fridays because we're going to unpack new topics with all of our crazy stories and opinions. Um, oh, and if you have stories or opinions, drop them in the comments or anywhere on social media using the hashtag travel stories unpacked. <laughs> <laughs>